going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's Pals Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check. With something a little bit different. Didn't think I was going to be talking to you guys uh, tonight, but something just fell in my lap, and I thought we could have a bit of fun with it. Might not do an episode of WWE last week this week, but I do hope to be getting on later on this weekend with Jake DeMarco to do episode two of The State of Wrestling. Please go and check that out if and when that drops. Also, Flix Fix came back and I gave you all my controversial thoughts on the trailer for the new remake of The Crow. So thank you for all of that and uh, for the response that Jake and I got for the first episode of The State of Wrestling. But what was dropped in our laps today? It's Friday. Fridays are fun days. Smackdown and all that kind of stuff. We're getting the Slammies, guys. We are getting the Slammies. The Slammies are back in WWE and they've linked it with Wrestlemania as opposed to making it an elevated episode of Monday Night Raw and kind of foolish and kind of random. The announcement came as follows. The Slammies are back. WWE's iconic awards show makes its triumphant return when the 2024 Slammies, the Fans' Choice Awards, streams live from WWE World at Wrestlemania. That whole fan experience thing that they're doing for like 10 days around Wrestlemania. The best part of it all is you, the WWE Universe, will be voting to decide who leaves Wrestlemania with a Slammy in their hands. Voting is open now. Roddy, Roddy, Raw. Roddy, Roddy, Raw. I think this is fantastic, and I mean, it is what it is. It's kind of like the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame means whatever it means that night, and then it kind of goes away. Slammies are kind of the same thing. Uh, the Slammies is going to take place on the WWE Network on the Sunday of WrestleMania, it's going to be hosted by Big E and Kathy Kelly, so that's cool. Cool to see uh, Big E in the mix of things and all that sort of thing. Um, the fact that they're putting it off as a Fans' Choice Awards. Now, do I believe this voting about as much as I believed uh, Taboo Tuesday and Cyber Sunday back in the day? Yes. Is it absolutely uh, they're going to use it to, to put forth whoever they want to put forth? Absolutely. But they did release the categories. They did release the categories. And I'm going to tell you what I think really, really quickly. I'm going to tell you who I'm voting for, for, for whatever the voting is worth, and we'll go from there. But let me know what you guys think. The Slammies were kind of random and awkward, weren't they? They were just sort of jammed in at random points in the year at various points. Remember when it was an actual event where they actually like went to a banquet hall and it was kind of like the Oscars and then they shoved it under Raw and then it disappeared and appeared again and it disappeared and it appeared again. So making it part of the pomp and circumstance of WrestleMania week where you've already got the Hall of Fame. You've already got two nights of WrestleMania. You've already got NXT having their show midday on Saturday. You've already got whatever local events that WWE's having, all the fan uh, fan expo, fan access, I should say, uh, stuff going on. Whatever else they do locally, like they do all the charity stuff and, and whatnot. So the Slammies should be here? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know where I'm pulling that from because I'm very, very tired and a lot of this is coming off the top of my head. But the Slammies are like a year end thing. Like who did the best in 2023? Who did the best in 2022? Etc. But the wrestling year starts and ends with WrestleMania. So this is wrestling's year end. So it makes sense to put it here. That's what I've got. So we're going to go through the categories. I'm going to vote along with you guys, so this will be fun, I suppose. <coughs> Excuse me. As I scroll through the page, we're going to see who they've nominated, because you only get five choices each. It's not like we're writing in our own choices. Like, they've, they've pretty much narrowed the field. Um, breakout Superstar of the Year. The choices are L.A. Knight, Dragon Lee, Pretty Deadly, Tiffany Stratton, and Jey Uso. Now. Now. The answer is Jey Uso. But I'm going to say, it's it's weird as you go all the way down. Tiffany Stratton had a banner year plus in NXT, but as we sit right now, she's brand new on the main roster. She's had a couple of matches. She had a pretty good showing in the Rumble, a pretty damn good showing in the uh, Elimination Chamber. So she's showing flickers, and she's showing, um, you know that if you've never seen her before, if you don't watch NXT, which you should watch NXT, but that's besides the point, um, if you're just seeing her, you're seeing that, let me uh, let me take a bite out of this, I want to see more of this. That's not the same as breaking out. Jey Uso um, 
you know, established tag team wrestler for years and years and years, uh, breaking away, going to Monday Night Raw, still becoming a tag team champion with Cody Rhodes, which I thought was odd and a little bit counterproductive, if not a lot of fun. But, I mean, he's shown himself as a main character, and now we saw it the other week on Raw when him and his brother were face-to-face. -face. The two parts of that tag team, one of them is elevated and one of them is still part of a group. And Jimmy Uso is doing fantastic stuff. The fact that the, how crazy he's playing right now as how gaslit he is by by Roman Reigns is fantastic, but Jey Uso has just risen to another level. He's stepped up with with and across from guys like Seth Rollins, guys like Cody Rhodes, guys like Drew McIntyre. I mean, Cody or uh, Jimmy Uso's main enemy on Raw is Drew McIntyre, who's going to WrestleMania to fight for the world title. If that doesn't put you in the in the proper stratosphere, then I don't know what it is. Tiffany Stratton will be will be in this spot by this time next year. I I predict it. Pretty deadly. Our goofs. Dragon Lee is a lot of fun to watch, but other than occasionally going back to NXT and occasionally being associated with the LWO to the point where you don't know what he is fully if he's doing occasionally here and occasionally there, um, what's he sunk his teeth into on the main roster? I He's going to. Uh, again, like Tiffany Stratton, he's going to do that. Uh, I just don't think it's right now. And L.A. Knight didn't break out this year. L.A. Knight was already over as hell. I mean, he was over in TNA. He was over in NXT. He was over a couple of other places before he even got to NXT. He had a dip when they tried to make him into Max Dupree. But um, what we're seeing now is not him breaking out, because breaking out is taking a step up. He was already at that step up. He just got staggered for a bit. So I don't... It's all my interpretation, but that's not a breakout. That's somebody who was already up there, getting back up there again. So, with respect to Tiffany Stratton, Pretty Deadly, Dragon Lee, and LA Knight, the answer for this one is Jey Uso. Social star of the year. I don't pay enough attention to social media. I mean, I do, but I don't go on and like keep track of like oh what's jay doing today what's cody doing today what's punk doing today uh and especially not for for the ones we got here we got grayson waller logan paul drew mcintyre chelsea green and Liv morgan now logan paul is an odd one here because he is like outside of wwe he is a social media personality like that's his side gig when he's not, <laughs> when he's not a wrestler so that one doesn't seem very fair drew mcintyre through social media and otherwise, has been keeping his rivalry with CM Punk alive while CM Punk hasn't been there. Uh, Chelsea Green posts some cute stuff every now and then. Liv Morgan, same thing. Liv Morgan hasn't even been around, so she hasn't, like, I'm happy to have her back. Don't get me wrong. She got fucked over with the stupid pot deal. That was dumb. But she hasn't been a factor that I would be saying, okay, what did she do? What's, what's the update? What's this? What's that? Chelsea Green, the same. Um, I mean, Grayson Waller is a good dickhead, but <laughs> he's following in the footsteps of a lot of other good dickheads. So for the fact that I think Logan Paul's kind of disqualified for this because social media is his other job, I gotta go with Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is, he's doing the, uh, he's doing all the punk stuff, keeping that alive while he's got this thing with Seth going on, while he's, you know, got to play this, this uh, kid sitting in the back seat while his opponent at WrestleMania is worried about other opponents. He's got a very, he's got a very tricky line to walk right now, and I think he's doing that quite well. Oh my God moment of the year. I hate the generic categories like this. This is, uh, so we got Rey Mysterio finally punches Dirty Dom in the face on SmackDown. We got CM Punk returning to WWE at Survivor Series. We got EO Sky cashing in the Money in the Bank contract at SummerSlam. We've got The Rock slapping Cody Rhodes at the press conference. We've got Damage Control turning on Bailey on SmackDown. We've got Cody Rhodes slapping The Rock. Um, I mean, it's CM Punk. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't want to be disrespectful. It's CM Punk. Rey Mysterio punching Dirty Dom in the face because he didn't want to hit his kid. The more he said he didn't want to hit his kid, eventually you knew he was going to hit his kid. EO Sky cash, Money in the Bank cash-ins are ex 
expected. It's not an oh my, we've had enough money in the bank history now that a money in the bank cash in isn't an oh my god moment. The Rock and Cody slapping each other. Sure. I mean, as far as that goes, the, the way they both laughed each other off, it was just like it was just part of the promo. Now, the promos have been awesome. The build has been awesome. I'm looking forward to the tag match. I'm looking forward to the two title matches. All of that. But it's not an oh my god moment. CM Punk. And yes, I'm biased. I don't care. Um, the minute he got fucked over by AEW for a second time, and nobody said anything, nobody did anything. Everybody, everybody was denying everything. And then, and then, uh, Survivor Series was in Chicago, and I don't know about you guys. If you guys are talking to the CM Punk fans, today, I just kind of needed it to happen. Wrestling has been in a very weird place. WWE has had a crazy year or so. Vince gets... I'll be polite about it. Removed. <laughs> uh, Triple H takes over. Triple H makes WWE better. So many people come back. NXT starts getting better, pulling away from the 2.0 era. We get the, t we get the, uh, the merger with Endeavor. They become TKO. We get this announcement uh, with Netflix this year and, and some other things last year. Um, but it was a lot of, like, for every good, there was a bad. For every positive thing, there was somebody at some other company taking a jab here and there. There was, you know... Tony Khan arguing with Jinder Mahal for reasons. Needed something that was universally good. And, uh, I mean, first of all, War Games coming to the main roster on, on the auspice of Triple H was great. The match all coming together and whatever. They're, the way they signed off. And I'll be honest, I, uh, I you guys know me, I watched the, the What Culture watch-alongs with, um, oh, who is it? Adam Wilborn and Michael Hamflit. And... They were given all. They were doing all their typical jokey online stuff, which is a lot of fun. You guys should check them out if you haven't. Um, but there was no composure at that moment. As soon as like we were signing off, you heard uh, you heard uh, Michael Cole on commentary saying, "Oh well, you know this has been one hell of a night." And it, I think it was uh, I think it was Cody Rhodes' music playing at the end while they were all while they were all um, victorious. And then you just heard that static. And you heard the music, and everybody's like, oh, this is going to be a gigantic troll. And then it just wasn't, because we're not in that era of WWE anymore, where when you see something, you can believe it. And then he just sort of saunters out on stage, big shit-eating grin on his face. Uh, I didn't sleep for another hour after that show was over. I was just thinking, well, well... To those guys on the other side, there's my computer telling me that I need to do a virus update. Fantastic. Immediately, immediately, I thought, we're going to get CM Punk versus Cody Rhodes. And WWE is going to give it to us. And that's awesome. Considering what I think of Cody Rhodes half the time, that's a hell of a statement to make in and of itself. It's kind of like when me... Uh, when I was uh, in Toronto and I saw Will Ospreay and I had to admit that a Kenny Omega match was good. So, turn around. Small growth on my part. CM Punk showing up. You know, the one thing that would never happen. The one, uh, the one goose that laid the golden egg that uh, Tony Khan let out of the hen house. Or whatever other stupid metaphor you want to use for those idiots on the other side fucking him over to the point where he went back to the company that he said he would never go back to. How much must you suck? It was a big win. It was the it was the biggest win WWE could score other than getting Cody Rhodes. And when we do get that match, and we will get that match at some point, I told them if if um if he wasn't injured this year and if they had t decided to go the direction of Cody Rhodes versus CM Punk, I would have said, put that over the rock, put that over both title matches. That is the biggest match we can have right now. You can't, all due respect to the Mysterios, all due respect to Damage Control that get mentioned on here twice, who who have been telling a fantastic story in their own right. Uh, I think Damage Control gets lost in the shuffle among LWO, Bloodline, Judgment Day, The Rock, um, Cody Rhodes coming back, and, and CM Punk coming back. I think the cool story that Damage Control is telling gets lost in the shuffle or not, and that's really unfortunate 
but it's not as big as CM Punk coming back to WWE. It's not that big. It's got to be CM Punk. It like there is no other. There is no other. That's that's all I've got. Match of the year. Some uh, some predictable choices on here as well. Bad Bunny versus Damian Priest in the San Juan Street Fight at Backlash. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at Elimination Chamber in Montreal. Gunther versus Chad Gable on Raw when he made his kid cry. It's fine. Uh, Asuka versus Bianca Belair versus Charlotte at SummerSlam and Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley at uh, at WrestleMania 39. Now. This isn't as easy a choice for me. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest was awesome. It was a lot of fun. It was location-specific, and the crowd ate it up, the same as they did for Zelina Vega and Rhea Ripley that night. Uh, Gunther versus Chad Gable, fantastic fucking match. Chad Gable breaking out of the mostly comedic role he's been doing recently. Um, Fantastic. Like I said, the family stuff, the, um, you know, just uh, so close and yet so far, that kind of story. Really, really awesome. My hat's off to both of those guys. Gunther's having an amazing time, obviously, with his record-breaking Intercontinental Championship reign. I'll be honest, SummerSlam, I... I respect the hell out of Charlotte Flair. You guys know that. I'm a big flag waver for Charlotte Flair. Asuka's awesome. Bianca Belair's there as well. I don't remember much about this match which probably should tell me something considering considering Bianca Belair is not terrible and I really like the other two women in the match and I'm one of the people that doesn't mind a triple threat match triple threat matches are a really cool fun dynamic to play with it's gotta come down to Roman Reigns Sami Zayn and Charlotte Flair Rhea Ripley now I gotta do a little bit of a battle here because you got one that's incredible star versus incredible star much like this year much like this year, when you compare the two uh, women's title matches at WrestleMania this year, you've got an amazing story with the dissolution of uh, damage control uh, with Bailey and Io, and that's that's a long, well-told story, versus Becky and Rhea, which is awesome, but it's also a much simpler, this big fucking star versus this big fucking star. Now, that's very much what Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley was last WrestleMania, and... I will say Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, the Elimination Chamber. It's hard to get a better story than that. Sami Zayn, from slowly working his way into the bloodline to getting kicked out, to having his moment in his hometown, to getting his music back, which was no small feat in and of itself. I don't know. Because by by yards and miles, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania last year was the best women's match I can remember in the longest time. Not going to lie, and people are going to say, oh, you didn't check out this person or that person. I'm talking about what I saw, what I found relevant, and what I watch on my TV on a regular basis. One of the best women's matches I've seen. Absolutely star-making night for Rhea Ripley. Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn had that amazing story. So, it, again, it's two different things. It's an amazing story versus big fucking star versus big fucking star. So I think in very different ways they found themselves on an equal playing field. So what's got to tip it for me is one happened on a B pay-per-view and one happened at WrestleMania. So I got to go with Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley from WrestleMania 39 with a whole lot of honorable mention to Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn and uh, to a lesser extent the uh, Gunther Chad Gable because it is it is for a mid-card title. The outcome was predictable. It was on Raw. To the best of my memory, it was cut, the he cut to hell by commercials, which is not their fault, but it just it means it doesn't hold up in the same way. NXT Superstar of the Year, and I really wish they had done men's and women's like they did on the main roster, but here we go. Ilya Dragunov, Carmelo Hayes, Lyra Valkyria, Tiffany Stratton, Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker is the project, which is great, and he's great at it, and what he's doing with Baron Corbin right now is fantastic. I'm legitimately... Legitimately, the Wolf Dogs defending the NXT Tag Team Championships is one of the things I'm looking most forward to WrestleMania weekend because I think they're that fun a uh, team. Braun Breaker had his time. Carmelo Hayes had his time. Ilya Dragunov is solid and adds an element to anybody else that he's working with, but I wouldn't call... 
anything that he's done the thing that he's doing. He has added his element to things that other people are... He's added his element to the Carmelo Hayes story. He's added his element to a match with Trick Williams. He's added his element to um, matches with other people of, of that type. But I don't know what... I don't know what Ilya's moment is, which is kind of sad because he's the champion. That should be his moment, but he's not... He's a champion, but he doesn't feel like he's on the top of the card. And when you look at something like Stand and Deliver, it's the perfect um, illustration of that because that title match, that uh, Ilya Dragunov versus Tony D uh, at Stand and Deliver, uh, it's going to be fun as hell. It's going to be really weird seeing those two characters interact. It already has been really weird watching those. But we, we know Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams in a match that's probably going to be stepped up, let's be real, is going to be the real main event. So it is kind of surprising to me that Trick Williams isn't on this card if I'm or on this on this list of suggested NXT superstars of the year. Lyra Valkyria, amazing. Tiffany Stratton feels like her moment in NXT was say 6 months ago. Lyra Valkyria's moment is now, so I would put her over Tiffany. Braun Breaker had an amazing run at the top right away before they made him a heel and brought him back down and through his heel work he's found himself back to face status in this tag team so he's done a really interesting curve so Tiffany Stratton and Braun Breaker who are both on the main roster now anyway so this is kind of past the point but they feel like they had their hype like early, like I said if you had asked me this like six months ago it would have been Tiffany and Braun Breaker right away uh, with Carmelo Hayes always percolating in the background and that's what I'm going with here um, Carmelo Hayes is one half of the match that's probably going to main event over the title match I, I can't d defend it any other way it's Carmelo Hayes Carmelo Hayes on the main roster is going to be awesome too just, uh, just saying Trick Will as well Trick Will as well um but I'm predicting, spoiler alert, uh, I'm predicting Trick beats Carmelo, sticks around in NXT for a while, takes another run at the NXT Championship, and he gets a run before he comes up. Carmelo Hayes, Carmelo Hayes is a lot like Roxanne Perez, Braun Breaker, Tiffany Stratton, etc. Has nothing left to do in NXT. Rivalry of the Year. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre, Dirty Dominic Mysterio versus Rey Mysterio, Bianca Belair versus Damage Control. Why does Bianca Belair versus Damage Control feel like it was a million years ago? Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and R Truth versus the Judgment Day. Um, I mean, it's not even the match that I'm looking most forward to at WrestleMania, but it's got to be Roman and Cody. If, as far as the the best feuds for Roman, they didn't give it to Sammy and they didn't give it to Jay. And you guys know how much I fought for those two results, for those two guys to be the guys. If you want to, I'm going to say it one more time, if you want to play the, the bloodline for logic and wrap it up in the most logical way possible, you have to have Jay be the one to beat Roman Reigns. They're, they're clearly not doing that. They are very clearly not going to let the Jay Roman thing happen. So... A little bit, little bit of trust the process, a little bit of Papa H getting into my brain a little bit. If they didn't do Sammy and they didn't do Jay, and it's all led to this, even though it's not really his story to end, like the bloodline is not Cody's story to end, he wasn't there for most of it, it's got to be Cody, right? I mean, Bianca Belair versus Damage Control feels like it was a million years ago. Our truth and the Judgment Day is a comedy shtick. Dirty Dom and Ray was just Dom and Ray wanting to work together at WrestleMania. Let's be real for a second. And Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre is what we're getting because CM Punk is injured. And I hate to say it like that because Drew McIntyre is on form. Seth Rollins is doing the absolute best he can with a title that people are determined not to respect. But it's going to be Roman and Cody. And that's coming from me. There you go. Faction of the Year. Judgment Day, Alpha Academy, Imperium, Bloodline, Damage Control. Alpha Academy is a comedy group. Imperium... Gunther on his own is more impressive than Imperium. The Bloodline has already started to fracture and fall apart. Damage Control is fracturing and falling apart. It's the Judgment Day because they're awesome. Return of the Year... 
I'm sorry, it's CM Punk. I'm sorry, Rock, Nia Jax, Randy Orton, and Naomi. It's just not you. I've said for a while now, like, uh, when people a couple weeks ago on SmackDown uh, were mad because Naomi's match got cut short or she didn't get her entrance or whatever because the Rock ran long. Sorry, Naomi, you're not the Rock. Well, in this case, I'm looking at this list, be happy about this, and I'm looking at the Rock and I'm saying, sorry, Rock, you're not CM Punk. It's CM Punk. It's always going to be CM Punk. CM Punk is the guy who even the people that hate him have to admit that he's a needle mover. Even the people that hate him and hate WWE have to acknowledge that CM Punk going to WWE is awesome. CM Punk, for the amount of time he's spending outside of the ring with the NXT talent, and people are trying to turn that into something weird, and it's not. Um, CM Punk and WWE, 10 years later. Who knew? It, it returned the years, CM Punk. Come on now. How long was Naomi gone? Not very long, and she just had a temper tantrum. Randy Orton was injured. Super unfortunate. Nia Jax should have never come back. And The Rock is The Rock, and he's doing WrestleMania stuff. Best entrance. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Bianca Belair, Seth Freakin' Rollins, Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch, The Rock, and Dominic Mysterio. Now, they're specific to say Dom Dominic Mysterio's entrance at WrestleMania 39, which is awesome, but that's also kind of not fair because you're comparing a bunch of people's generic entrances to his entrance at WrestleMania, which is an entirely different thing. Um... Ah, see, here's the thing. It's probably Cody Rhodes, because Cody Rhodes has the closest thing in WWE right now to what Chris Jericho gets in AEW, or what Chris Jericho should be getting in AEW if people weren't being strange about Chris Jericho right now. I would say Rhea Ripley's, because she has so much presence and so much presentation in the way that she presents herself. Except, I do I've never, and I've said this before, her Judgment Day remix of her entrance music is not great. If she did the exact entrance she had now with the original version of My Brutality, it would be perfect. So I'm giving it to Cody on a technicality, but it's Rhea Ripley if they could tweak it a little bit. Male Superstar of the Year, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Gunther, Logan Paul. Logan Paul is only in, in bits and bursts. Gunther... I'm disqualifying Gunther because as good as he is right now, I don't think we've seen the best Gunther we're going to get. So that's a thing. Roman Reigns, part-timer. It is what it is. It's, it serves a purpose. I defend him being a part-timer, but it is what it is. Male Superstar of the Year, Cody Rhodes. Everybody loves him. But Seth Rollins has had the weirdest weight to carry on his shoulders. He's... The guy that's talked about just under everybody else. He's got the belt that nobody really wants to like. Um, he's trying to be the third wheel on the bigger title match at WrestleMania while still trying to maintain his own title reign and title momentum and importance and all that sort of thing. There's a lot of things Seth Rollins is doing at once. So the fact that he hasn't completely fallen on his ass is, is worthy of praise, in my opinion. And the last category is Female Star of the Year. You know what I'm going to say here. Becky Lynch, Io Sky, Bailey, Bianca Belair. Sorry about all of your luck. It's Rhea Ripley for all the reasons already discussed. If you've listened to this channel even once, you know why my choice is Rhea Ripley. I would make a case that Rhea Ripley is the main event, or sorry, is the main character of WWE at the moment in a certain context. Now, let me know what you guys think of these uh, categories and what I've thought of them in the box down below. Let me know what you think about the Slammys returning at all and being part of the WrestleMania pomp and circumstance. I didn't think I was going to be talking to you guys tonight, so I'm losing my voice a little bit. I'm tired a little bit. As you can tell, I'm kind of rambling a little bit as well. I have no notes other than the categories on the WWE website in front of me. I did not prepare for this. Didn't think I was going to be doing it. But I've done it now. The Slammies are back. Let me know what you think. I've been Spaz. Your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to you later. Bye.